G'day, my name is Jenny and I'm a mum of 16 children and I'm also a two times cancer survivor. Now, recently I had my blood tests, my scans and my follow-up appointment with my specialist in Brisbane and I've got the footage from that visit and I'm going to share that with you and give you all my results from all of my tests. But before we get to that, um, there's been a couple of comments on our pages and on our channel here. I wanted to have a little talk about those. So let's get the intro up and then let's have a chat. Now where to start? Um, I'm not going to drag this out too much, but I did want to talk about a couple of comments that were made on our pages and on our channel. Now I've been back for all of my cancer checkup. Um, it's 18 months since I've had my big open surgery to remove a cancerous tumor off my kidney. And I also get all of my checkups done on my, um, on my neck where they removed my thyroid from the cancer five years ago. I think all testing for cancer is an anxious time and I'm grateful for my family and my friends who sort of rally around me at, during those times. Uh, Ray and I went down, so hubby and I went down to Brisbane. He drove me down. Now when we go down to Brisbane, we always try and make that trip as stress-free and as nice as we possibly can. So we we chat, we laugh, we sing songs as we go down and we try and just make it a really pleasant day and that helps with the anxiety of going and getting the testing done for cancer checkups. When we got home from that, I was going through on our pages and I like to do my very best to try and acknowledge that I have seen everyone's comments and read them and I like the interaction because like you're more than just followers to us. You are family and friends. We love chatting with you. We see the people who like to comment a lot and you know, we sort of build a relationship with you. It's really important to me to go through and read everyone's comments. But unfortunately, sometimes you get bad comments um, from people and that's I guess part of life now this is part of social media and I don't I don't believe that we should tolerate that I don't believe that it's okay to just write mean things online it's okay to have an opinion about whatever you're looking at at that time but that doesn't make it right just to write whatever you want. People are connected to the other side of these posts. So if somebody's talking about their, their cancer and you're making mean comments about it, there's an actual person on the other side of that post who's going to read that. And I mean, I've dealt with the media for about 20 years now, so I've grown quite a thick skin to most people's comments, but there are some that still shock me and make me very sad and they hurt me. I would rather somebody read it, disagree with it and move on than to look at it, disagree with it and then give me a mouthful about what I've been through or my beliefs. And if we don't share the same beliefs, that's okay. That's okay with me. We can have differences of opinion. We can agree to disagree, but we don't have to be mean to each other. And I think it's time that we stop. We learn some kindness and some respect for each other. And there has to be some sort of standard as to what we can write and say to each other online. Just because you're not saying it face to face to somebody doesn't mean that it's less hurtful or less cruel to say what you're saying. So I'm not here to name and shame people. Um, I'll show you their first name, um, but I will blot out their last name. But I want to just show you a couple of the comments. This is what we deal with. This is part of 
um, putting ourselves out there and sharing a little bit of our family life with the public, this is what we get. This is definitely not the worst of what we have received um, and heard from other people. Um, so this particular woman had been trolling our YouTube and Instagram pages and was writing a lot of comments, a lot of really mean, nasty um, comments all over um, our socials. She found my cancer videos and she decided that she would write a few on there as well. This Jasmine, um, you know, continued to make more comments on there and then when they just became just too much we reported and blocked her off of YouTube and Instagram and then of course she went immediately over to Facebook and she sent me um, this this message so this was a direct message um, a private message to me and this this really hurt because and I'll talk about this other comment in a moment about somebody telling me that I didn't have the right to talk about my cancer journey because I wasn't terminal, which I think is just a really silly comment. But um, for this Jasmine to read about this other comment and then to send me a direct message telling me that she's waiting on my terminal diagnosis. Um, wow. I mean, shame, shame on her for doing that. Just knowing that there are people out there being that mean just makes me very sad. So we need to stop this. Let's move on to the, um, the next comment that was made. Now this one was made on our Facebook page and you know I read this and immediately it hurt me. Um, then I, I read it again and I could see the bitterness and I could see the journey that this woman had been through going through hard times and going through really traumatic times doesn't excuse further bad behavior from that person we can we can have sympathy and compassion for people but that doesn't mean that that person who's hurting can go out and hurt other people so that's what I sort of took away from it is that obviously this woman has been through um, a really difficult time. From what I gather from the, the comments, she's lost a child to cancer. So absolutely, as a mum, my heart is, is absolutely hurting for this other woman. Um, but Anne-Marie also said some really nasty things to me. And I don't think that her pain excuses trying to hurt somebody else. Telling somebody that they have no right to talk about their own cancer journey simply because it's not a terminal diagnosis or that it's offensive to people with a terminal diagnosis. Look, we're gonna to have to disagree on that. I don't believe that's the case. I think everyone has the right to speak about their journey with cancer. Every cancer has the potential to have serious consequences on people, depending on when you find it, how far it's progressed, what treatment is available, what treatment you can afford. Like every single cancer, yes, some may be um, harder to treat, but not allowing people to share their testimony on what they've been through, um, doesn't seem right to me. I don't think um, Anne-Marie was speaking kindly. And again, to these to these ladies, to, the, to anyone who makes mean comments or trolls people's pages, um, my response to you is this. I know that you make the comments in order to get me to bite. You want me to be upset. You want me to hurt. That's why people troll other people. But my response is, yes, it did hurt me. Yes, I thought it was a really mean thing to say, but I'm going to pray for you. And I'm gonna pray that you find some peace and some compassion in your heart so that um, you can move forward from this 
and maybe find a better way to spend your time rather than running other people down and making bad comments online. Nobody wants to deal with cancer. It's, it's life changing. All cancer is significant to those fighting it and those around them supporting them. Cancer is not a competition. You don't win by having the worst diagnosis or the most horrific treatment. Um, there is no winning with cancer. The only way we can defeat this is by talking about it. The more that we talk about it, the more that we share our stories and what we've been through, the more we get the awareness out there of symptoms and early detection and testing and the more fundraising that we can do so that we can get the research done then we are all taking giant steps forward towards a cancer-free world and that's what we all need and want so don't be scared to share your journey don't be frightened to talk about what you've been through. Tell people, help people, support people. You might change somebody else's life just by sharing your story. You might encourage somebody to go and get some testing done and that might save their life. So keep talking about it, keep fundraising, keep supporting all of the, the cancer charities so that we can get this research done. Because I know together, we are going to find cures for this terrible, terrible disease that affects just so many people on this planet. Okay, let's go watch the rest of the video. Well, it's that time again. I'm heading down to Brisbane. I've had all my scans and blood tests done for my cancer checkups, and I'm heading down there to get my results. <music> driving down from Toowoomba to Brisbane. Hubby's driving for me, which is lovely. And we're just taking a bit of a break from the music. Ray's been in charge of the playlist this morning. We've had a little bit of everything from country to Disney to pop to, I think even some sound of music made it in there. <laughs> and we just finished listening to Danger Zone from Top Gun. So, but we've stopped just to say g'day and let you know that we're nearly to Brisbane. And this will be my checkups for 18 months on from my surgery. So I can't even believe that it's been 18 months already uh, from my big surgery to come down here and remove my second lot of cancer. Over the last couple of weeks, I've had a lot of blood tests done and some scans and we're just coming down to get all the results from that and to make sure everything is a-okay so should be fine <laughs> we're nearly there and we'll go find a park near the hospital and get this appointment done with yep 
<laughs> grab some lunch and head home again. We've got to be home again in time to pick kids up from school. So no mucking around. We're just going to get in, get the appointment done and then get back on the road again. having trouble finding a park. <laughs> well, we get here early. Yeah. So, hubby has dropped me off at the hospital because we couldn't find a park, so he's gone off to try and find one. Now, like all medical centers and hospitals, you have to wear a mask when you go inside, so I've got my mask ready and I've got one for hubby as well. Definitely brought choice. <laughs> oh, it's always good to get the mask back off. Now hubby's just gone to get the car and I'm going to wait here. I don't um, really want to walk too far with my, my dodgy knees. So I'm just going to sit here and wait for him. Just had a fabulous chat with some folks sitting around here waiting for their uh, lifts to arrive as well. Um, and we're just having a lovely talk, so that's always wonderful to sit and chat with people. Thank you. We just grabbed some lunch, we've got some KFC, we're just going to sit here for a few minutes and have that, and then we'll head back to Toowoomba. now from Jen's appointment down at the doctor in Brizzy. We've yep. been and picked up Sabrina from work. Because right she let us borrow her car. Yes, we borrowed her car, <laughs> which was very good of her. And I'm going to head off now and do the school run. So I'll go pick up all the kids from school, get a couple of kids to work, and then I will come home and tell you all about my appointment. Fantastic. So I'm home from picking up the kids now. I've dropped a couple of kids to work and we're all back here now. And I'm just going to grab this opportunity to tell you about how my appointment went today. Now, hubby drove me down there, so thank you, Ray, for doing that. And thank you to Sabrina for letting us borrow your car to get down there today. That made the trip very comfortable. Now, if you can hear me over the traffic and the <laughs> noises in the neighborhood, um, so the blood tests looked fantastic. So the doctor said that considering that I had been through such a big surgery 18 months ago, he said, you wouldn't even know it looking at my blood test results. My kidneys are functioning perfectly, which is amazing. So it was definitely the right choices at the time that we made about how we um, went about doing this surgery whether we were going to remove a kidney or try and remove the tumor and we removed the tumor saved the kidney and so all the cancer was gone and that was definitely the right choice and now I've got two perfectly functioning kidneys which is amazing and then he looked over my scan results and again he pointed out everything on his computer screen and showed us like where the scarring is from the surgery but he said again everything there looks really great there is a small cyst still on the base of that kidney but he said that doesn't look nasty and they will just see it in follow-up scans anyway so it all looks really good I think this was a very successful doctor's appointment we got great results 
thank you so much to everyone for your prayers. I really truly appreciate it. And thanks for coming along on my appointment with me today. And we will see you in the next video. God bless.